The cloning process can require a specialized set of tools and conditions. Here we're going to focus on the growing medias in, in, that are particularly used for the cloning process. We see two different types of cloning setups here. Keep in mind the one on the left here, a little bit dirtier, not quite keeping things as clean as we should, especially when we're looking at the success of our potential next run of plants or next generation of plants. Here, while we still have uh, potentially some things off in the picture here, a much cleaner setup in this uh, image here than in here. And again, keep in mind we want to keep our cloning environment very clean uh, to re reduce the chance of losing our entire crop. So first off, a very common material uh, used that a lot of growers select is rock wool. This limits root disturbance during transplant. It can be expensive, and, but, and moisture consistency at times can be an issue. As a CEC or cation exchange capacity of zero, so plants need to be on a continuous liquid feed. Also, this material has no buffering capacity, so the grower has to keep that in mind uh, and watch the pH of the solution that it's that they're feeding their plants. Now, the reason why it says limits root disturbance is there is Rockwell uh, companies that make smaller cubes that can start uh, the initial root development and then easily be, be transplanted into larger um, cubes here, easily fitting into place. This limits the root disturbance going from one size or directly to another, not requiring any uh, disturbance of the roots initially there. There's also peat pellets. Uh, these are an economical option, and they give uh, roots an area to fill in. They need to be monitored for even and consistent moisture. Uh, they can be a little bit of an issue, especially starting out, uh, but once you get everything evenly moist, you can put the uh, clones in there, and uh, just monitoring them so one doesn't dry out more so than another uh, to keep that clone going well at the early stages and continue on to keep those roots going. And there's also expanded, expanded clay pellets. These are clay pieces that are processed in very high temperatures to create these little pebbles here. Uh, they contain large and small pores, allow for air exchange. They should be rinsed and soaked before use to remove any of the dust that comes in the shipping container. You do not want to let these dry out during any part of the growth cycle. You want to keep moisture at all times because once they dry out, they can be difficult to re-wet and re-moisten, and that could severely stress uh, the newly developing roots of our plant here. Also have foam or oasis blocks. Oasis is the name brand. They're good for plant support. Uh, they do require a uh, sufficient time to pre-soak. They can be expensive, and they will always leave this like oasis dust around. Uh, they're typically used in floral arrangements here uh, because they're great at allowing of supporting of plant stems. Uh, so sometimes they're called that floral foam. Uh, also good if keep even moisture to be used for propagation process, though not commonly used a lot. There's sand, and this provides good porosity, uh, gives roots good aeration. It can be messy. It's a heavy material even when it's dry. It's hard to ship. Um, you know, it comes in typically what we call sandbags uh, to make it easy to transport. Roots can be easily disturbed though because the sand itself will not um, hold much um, structure to it. Um, so while it does have um, some advantages of allowing good aeration, it can also have uh, some drawbacks there, especially when you go to remove uh, the plants to go to the next container. Sterilizing our growing media, so this should be considered for fixed growing media such as um, clay or sand, or even if you're uh, considering using soil. Uh, there's chemical um, sterilization, which is incorporating carbon peroxide or chlorine-based products to kill organisms. Heat st or steam sterilization is also recommended, but this can be a challenge to get even distribution. As you can see in this um, high tunnel situation, using a steam generator here under a tarp to kind of steam sterilize at least the surface here. Also, they make uh, these complex uh, machines that have all these little, um, basically, pipes that poke into the soil and inject steam that way. However, these are not advised uh, for pro professional operations. You simply would just buy new. Uh, there's going to be a lot of investment into steam, and it can only sterilize a certain portion. So that's why starting with a sterilized media to begin with can help you avoid this process and ensure you're starting clean every time.